Baptist Day here at Bethany First Baptist Church. We're glad you could be here. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the sunshine and the rain as bad as we need the rain. Amen. We're going to let the deacons come now and, and the brothers, the men of Bethany, and all our guests, men, who are going to be part of the devotion. So if you're a guest and you're part of the devotion, come and join us right now as the deacons come forward to lead in devotion. Amen. Amen. I, I can use some more of that. Ain't it wonderful? It's not good English, but it's good theology. How the light shine. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Isn't it wonderful to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Yes. Give God a hand clap right now. We have a scripture read by our Deacon Hall at this particular time. Amen. I'm coming from 2 Samuel, chapter 22. One. One through seven. And David spoke unto the Lord the words of his of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my rock. In him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou hast saved me from violence. I will call on the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. When the waves of death compass me, the floods of the ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compass me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God, and he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. May the Lord have a blessed and special, mighty, wonderful, righteous, always, always, always true work. Amen. Amen, amen. At this time, we will have our uh, prayer by Deacon Harris. Oh, here, please. Father, we begin this day by rejoicing in you. Thank you for your glory and your mercy. Thank you for allowing us to come back and worship with you this afternoon. Oh, yes. Protect us. All in the your house, Father God. Yeah. We need your worship, Father. Yeah. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that prayer. Thank you for that scripture. As we end our devotion at this time, remain prayerful. Remember, prayer not only makes the difference, but it is the difference. As we turn it over to the pulpit, stay focused. And we're here to worship God. Amen. We're not here to worship anybody. We're here for God and God alone. Amen. At this time, we turn it over to the pulpit and we'll start everything. So, buckle up. Thank you, deacons, for orderly and brief devotion. Amen. When you pray it up, you don't have to take no. Bible. You just pray and thank God. Keep on blessing. All right, we're going to have a song of praise and then we will have the introduction of our worship leader by Deacon Robert Harris, our worship leader, Brother King Barty. Then we will come back for pulpit devotion. And if there are any other preachers in the house, raise your hand. Raise your hand, we're going, we're not going to bother my great speaker for this morning. Are you resting with your, with your better half, your other half, huh? We, we had a good sermon about that, that's why I'm talking about it. Y'all missed it, but if there any people, we're glad to have Reverend Ross with us. Amen. 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 Reverend Willingham is here, and he'll be out in a minute. So let's have a good time. We're going to have some singing right here. Do you love good singing? Amen. You love the church music. I'm talking about that other, I'm talking about the church music. Amen. Well, let's have some church music.
in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any <laughs> bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my love, my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Amen. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. I've read from Philippians, the second chapter, verse 1 to verse 5. May God bless the hearers and readers of his word. Amen. 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 Let every head bow and every heart pray. Our Father and our God, thank you for this another occasion to be with us of men and women walking in love up the King's Highway. Heavenly Father, thank you for summoning us from all over the city and the state to come to this appointed place at this appointed time to worship you in spirit and in truth and in love. Oh, Heavenly Father, we've been worshiping you all day in our 
reading the scriptures and hearing the preach word and, and I give it to you, Heavenly Father. Yes. And singing the Zion songs and we're just so glad for another opportunity to witness this another men and women. Oh, Heavenly Father, bless all these godly men and these godly women that have taken out of their time. They could be doing something else, but they took and heeded your word, Heavenly Father, that came here today to make this a joyous occasion. Oh, Heavenly Father, make this program what you would want it to be. Oh, Heavenly Father, may people get healed in this service today, Heavenly Father. I know that out in the congregations, somebody needs healing. And we know you show just enough compassion to heal, Heavenly Father. Well, dear God, we look up to you for which cometh all our help and our help coming from the Lord. Heavenly Father, let us elevate our minds today to accept what the preacher, the preacher here, Reverend Boy Jay, would have us to heal. Yes, sir. Oh, Heavenly Father, may he preach so hard to everybody will come. What must we do to be saved? Oh, Heavenly Father, bless the past of this great establishment for having this event in this church here today, Heavenly Father. Bless everybody that follow his leadership. Oh, dear God, that the works of the kingdom will be done much easier. Oh, Heavenly Father, I should ask that you bless us all alike here today. Bless our families we had to leave at home, Heavenly Father. That when we would return to our place of abode, that they too would have felt and they too would have been saved, Heavenly Father. Oh, dear God, we thank you. Uh, we love your name. Your name is all we know and trust. Your name is a light in a dark place. And again, Heavenly Father, I'm so happy. My heart has so much joy in it today to see men, women, boys, and girls walking up the king's highway and put the devil under their feet. So, oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for everybody who has something to do with this program today. Heavenly Father, give them a special blessing. That when they return home, everything their home will be home for peace, joy, love, contentment, and love. Blessed we ask in the God and Son Jesus' name for our sake we ask them all. Let all God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
now we're ready for the tribute to Mitch, given by Deacon Wade Hall, and then our guest soloist, Sister Celeste Ross of the Long Star Baptist Church. And then the introduction of our great minister by our own, Dr. Reverend.
Y'all pray for us. I'm a little winded today. But God is
Can we say amen? Yeah. Say amen again. Yeah. Give the Lord a hand clap praise and thank him for all these wonderful things. Amen, amen, amen. I just love to hear Sister Rose saying that. Amen. amen. And just have been blessed thus far by this wonderful program. My purpose up here is brief to introduce to some, to present to others, our guest speaker, who is no stranger to this church, and I'm glad to say is one of my few good friends. Because <laughs> a good friend is hard to find. Is that right? You know, everybody don't make the category of good friends. Friends, acquaintances, is associates, but a good friend, Robert P. Forte, is my good friend, sister person I love. Brother and sister Forte. Amen. Because you know God made a few good people. Amen. And he sent them our way. And we get blessed by them. Amen. Amen. The rest of the folk are still progressing to get good. Amen. But these folk have been aged and beautifully, how do you say, marinated. <laughs> marinated. Forget that age part. Marinated. To be good. And I served with Pastor Forte and Pastor Mrs. Union on the Political Action Committee, as many of you know. And uh, we have worked hard in getting Martin Luther King holiday years way back a long time ago. We interviewed uh, every, frankly, every candidate who ran for office during that time, and we drilled them good. Amen. <laughs> Got some concessions out of them, too. Amen. So if anybody would go into a a gunfight, I'm going to buy Forte to be in my back. Because he wouldn't turn and do this. So y'all good doctors folks are good for them. All right, that's enough. Amen. But I love Reverend Forte. We have a good time every time we get together. And it's just a joy to have a man here. And we love you all. You're our family too. And so we're going to ask the Bethany Choir to uh, descend and come, you know where you're supposed to be seated. Amen. Amen. You still, as the old Baptist preacher say, you're still on duty. Is that right? Uh, you don't get to walk out on that. Don't have me loud come here in front of all these folks. You're on duty. And uh, they've been singing so beautifully. Give them a hand. I'm going to double up on it, the guest, the great guest preacher. Amen. The Reverend Robert P. Forte, my friend and dear friend through the years. Amen, 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 amen. All right. We look nice. All right. We look nice to preach. I have somebody to preach to. Won't you elevate your right hand and receive the total respect. Get up to go to church just before the rain. We want to get up to go in the rain. And right after the rain. But you came to the end real quick. Some weeks ago, now, I said to my secretary, I looked at my calendar and I told her I closed my calendar for a year. 
did not own it. By now, she ain't on it. And she said, uh, mm-hmm. okay, but Reverend Benson called you. <laughs> and I said to her, I, I, I know, I know, I've got some legal situations that I'm going to be discussing with you, but close my calendar. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to accept any more engagements except those that's already on the calendar. And I said, hello. And he said, hello, Reverend. I said, Reverend Benson, how are you? And he said, I'm doing fine. He said, look, I want to know. <laughs> you can come and have my men and women stay. And I said to my secretary, hold the pen. <laughs> It's good to be here. And we are we're honored. Amen. Amen. Just be present with the men and the women of Bethany. Because I know if you all had just wanted somebody that's old and not preachers, younger, better looking. <laughs> got so much more money than I can. But when he asked me to come, I felt now, I, I'm not going to hold you because we've already had church. I leaned over to him a few minutes ago and made a statement to him, and I said to him, paraphrasing, I'll buy a quad from you. <laughs> 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 but I believe that quad mixed with my Gideon quad. We go all the way up to the White House. <laughs> but Bethany, for whatever it's worth, you wouldn't sell you. <laughs> and that's a shame. But we do have some of my kids' choir. They at least they need to I wish I could tell you that this is all that there were, but it's not. We, we got some of them. But they don't work over time. <laughs> they sing in the morning and when they finish, even before they leave church. I got to stay with the musicians. You know, they got that little secret password that nobody noticed except it's between me and them. You may catch it this evening, but if you don't, it's still there. And here's the way you go. They come up, and they sing a couple of numbers. And then Sister Paige throws me a little eye week or a little nod or something that you don't pick up on. <laughs> but I did. And what it said is, well, we threw <laughs> Yeah, and if you ain't ready, shame on you. So we will say no more. And so I'm going to ask our choir to come up. Our pianist is still on page. Our organist. And he's sitting here at the organ. That is the organ, right now. On the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, that don't look like no argument to me. What did you say it is it is? Okay. And then we have the young man that's coming with the guitar. And he tells me, Reverend, I don't play the guitar. Something about bass, but I, I tell him, but it looks like a guitar to me. Then we have a young man sitting at the drums. And we call him at Mount Gideon, we call him the Jumping Giant. That's because he don't never say that. He take all of his frustrations out on those drums. Oh, he he goes drums. The only problem that we have, that I have, personally, with the drum. Don't call me Lyndale. 
Jason just said that I didn't do his part. Which I was just being greedy. Today you all celebrate your annual meeting and After what we have gone through over the last few minutes, I believe we've had enough church to last us for a long time. So I don't have to do a whole lot of preaching. And besides, I can even say to you, that I don't have a sermon. I have a sermon. I did. I have a sermon. It was going to come from the fifth chapter of St. John. I know because it's on your program. <laughs> <laughs> when I came in, I was like, Nice ladies took my sermon and threw it out the window. And let me know that that's not the text for the evening. So if I mess up, it ain't my fault. But our text this evening will be found in the 15th chapter of the gospel recorded by St. John. And if I'm correct, the verses are the same. Just the fifth chapter of John is the 15th. And it reads, beginning with the ninth verse, as the Father hath loved so have I loved you. All right. Continue ye in my love. <coughs> if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Right. These things that I have spoken unto you, that you might, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. And then verse 17. These things I command you that you love one another. That you love one another. You chose as your subject Christian men and women abiding in Christ and walking in His love. Now, I want you to kind of stay with me while I try to piece these two things together. All right, amen. Because they do not necessarily mean the same thing. Amen. We can abide in Christ. And that's one thing. Walking in His love is something that can be altogether different. And He tells us that in His word. He says that if you keep my commandments, then you abide in me. In other words, in order for us to abide in Him, we must be able to deal with His law, with His love. And I think you'll also agree with me when I tell you that sometimes biblical students and I don't mean those who come on Sunday morning for the message, but biblical students, the 
those persons who go maybe to a Wednesday night Bible study or a Sunday morning educational ministry, they'll find out and they'll tell you that sometimes the laws of God can seem to conflict with the laws of existence. Is that right? So sometimes we, when, 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 we say, when Jesus says, now you can keep my commandments, and, and you'll abide in me, and, and, and we look out and we find that sometimes his commandments may seem to conflict with the laws of existence. Yeah, all right. All right. All right. Well, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. If I was to ask, if, is there anything in the Bible that we could consider it being an untruth? Mm-hmm. Is there any lies in the Bible? I like that. Yeah. Every one of us would stand up and say, no, sir. And I'd be the first one to tell you that there are no law, there are no lies in the Bible. Mm-hmm. But then when we look at that in terms of what is the definition of a lie, mm-hmm. I think we'll have to come to the conclusion that a lie is an untruth told to deceive. That's right. That's right. Now there's nothing in the book. That is an untruth told to deceive. But there are conflicting laws in the book. Uh, Jesus spent most of his time straightening them out. Uh, one of them, he said, now you have heard it say. Well, well, that's the same thing as saying, now it's in the book. You know, way back in the Old Testament, they, they said, I for an I and a tooth for a tooth. Now that's a law. For whatever is worth. He said, but now wait a minute. Wait a minute. You may have gotten that wrong. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth does not necessarily mean if you kill my dog, I got a right to kill your cat. No, 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 no. He said, no, 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 we need to straighten that out. I know they say it. But, but, but that's not true. He said, because I'm going to suggest that you resist evil. And if they kill your dog, give them the cat. One, one more in order to show you that, that, that sometimes the law seems to be conflicted. The old law says that if you want to get rid of your wife, give her a writing of divorce in the presence of a couple of witnesses. And then announce out loud where somebody else can hear you as a witness and say, I divorced thee, I divorced thee, I divorced thee. Go on about your business. You ain't married no more. He said, but now you need to be careful with that one too. All right, come on, Brady. But it's a law. It's in the book. Yes, it is. But Jesus is saying that it was out of the hardness of your heart that Moses let you do that. But even from the beginning of time, it weren't meant to be so. Well, if it wasn't meant to be so, why is it in the book? And so that it brings us down to where Jesus is saying, now listen, listen. There are certain things that in order for you to abide in me, you got to do it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You may not want to do it, but you got to do it anyway. If you want to abide in me, one of the things that you got to do, you got to love your enemy. Now, now, now push it. <laughs> You know, I, I got some good friends that I don't love. <laughs> I, 
I got some family milk on the side. Yeah, we start just before we get to love. But he said, now you got to love your enemies and, and you got to pray. For folk who despitefully use you. Now, if you want to abide in me, there are certain things you've got to do. Now, pray for somebody that's despitefully using me. Now, most of us have got that prayer down just about right. And what we're saying is, Lord, I don't wish my enemy no bad luck. But I sure hope good luck kill it. <laughs> in order for us to abide in Christ, he said, you have to keep my commandments. Now, I, I didn't say that. He says, now, if you keep my commandments... It seemingly, he is saying, I'm going to let you contradict one more law. Because everybody said, I want to be a servant of the Almighty God. I, I want to be a servant of Jesus. And he, Jesus is saying, if you keep my commandments, I don't want you as my servant. Come on, come on. Now, those, those two don't seem to go together. I thought it was all right to be a servant of Jesus, and yet I can hear him saying in his own words, I don't want you to be my servant. I want you to be my friend. Yes. And there is a difference between being a servant and a friend. Yes. He said, now a servant don't know what his master is doing. Oh, man, no. Well, most of us are servants. So we don't have the slightest idea what God is doing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's right. We, we don't know what's happening. Have you ever found yourself saying, now, Lord, what are you trying to do now? <laughs> Lord, where are you trying to take me? <laughs> Lord, why all of this stuff got to come on me? Yeah. That will let you know that you're a good servant. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But Jesus says that I want you to be my friend because if you're my friend, yes, then you know what the master is doing. Yeah. Everything he's given to me, I've given it to you. Yeah. Is that right? That's right. And so then we'll have to agree that abiding in Christ mm -hmm. may not necessarily be the same thing as walking in his love. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. We can serve him and not necessarily be walking in his love. Right. Because God says that there are some things that there are no laws for. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, you remember how he talked about the, the fruit of the Spirit. He said, of such things, there is no law. Right. Yeah. There are some things, there are no rules and regulations that govern them. There are some things we just have to use by faith. Yeah. 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 Loving each other is one of those. Because it appears as if Jesus is saying to us that if you're going to be walking in my love, that love has to be unconditional. A fool can walk with somebody if you make it conditional. I can love you if you love me. I can love you if you are of my group. You know, we do categorize ourselves. There are certain groups that we don't feel too comfortable in. I can feel comfortable with Reverend Benson. But I can remember back during those days when we had to meet with all kinds of politicians, no matter what they were running for, there were times when he felt comfortable and I didn't. Because some of those fellows running for office were attorneys. And I wasn't no attorney. You see, so, so there are certain positions that you can feel comfortable in. 
But when you start making them conditional, well, then you're not dealing with laws, rules, and regulations. I love you because. I love you in spite of. I love you because you are who you are. Do you know there's a whole lot of folk that can't say that? There's a whole lot of times when we have been called on to help somebody. When we have to find out a reason for doing it. Well, you know, you're my, you're my wife's brother's cousin's boy. Yeah, that, that, that sort of obligates me. Yeah, well, well yeah, I, I believe I can because you are a member of my friend's church. But can you say I'm willing to stand by you because you're a child of the king? I, I know you're not worthy of my help or anybody else's for that matter, but show me who's worthy of the love of the Almighty God. Can you hear him saying the greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend? I don't think we're willing too much to lay down our lives for nobody. And, and, and I don't mind, I don't mind, I don't mind helping you, but I got to be careful with that. Yeah, yeah. Because you see, uh, I, I got to be careful about how I help you because that can get to be happy for me. In the earlier years of my ministry, I used to enjoy letting folk have money. I did. I really did. Because I knew. If I let them have it and they don't pay me back, they'll never ask me for another thing. And I'll never have to go through that no more. Because now when they get into trouble and they need some money, they'll say, oh, oh I can't ask for a boy because I already owe him. Yeah. So there was some advantages. But we're here this evening because there are two things that your program is asking for. It is saying, first of all, we've got to abide in Christ. That Jesus said, now if you're going to do that, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. You don't have to understand it. Just do it. You remember that wind that they had over in Canaan? When Jesus turned water into wine? You remember what Mary said to those fellows? She said, whatever he asks you to do, just do it. Don't try to understand it. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to match it up. Just do it. And Jesus said, if you're going to abide in me, you don't need to understand my commandments. You just need to do it. Maybe you don't know why you're helping somebody, but you ought to help them anyway. Right. Maybe that fellow ain't worthy of the world's recognition, but you ought to recognize him anyway. Right. Why? Because I'm abiding in the Master, and the Master's commandments are that we love one another. That's not as strange the way he put that. Right. Brother Vincent, you would think. No, you wouldn't think that. <laughs> if it was me. <laughs> and I wanted to make that statement. I would have to add something to it, and I would have to say, now, now, if you're going to abide in me, and, and you're going to keep my commandments, one of the things that I want to command you to do is make ye friends with me in a mountain. That's scripture. That ain't rough 14. That's scripture. But those folks who ain't got no more than you, we ain't talking about them. I heard a preacher 
one time, uh, and, and I, 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 that's why I don't like to listen to preaching too much on the television. Yes, it can confuse you. Yes. So it can confuse you because the preacher said that if we are going to follow the commandments of Christ, the best way to help the poor is try not to be one of them. Yeah, yeah, try not to be one of them. But that ain't the way Jesus put it. Jesus said that we ought to help folk unconditionally. And if you want to know why, maybe it's because God has helped you unconditionally. How many of you feel as if you have earned salvation? You have earned the love of God. I've lived in such a way so that I can demand the love of God. For the scriptures say, For wherein you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Is that what it says? The scriptures say, There is none good. No, not more. We have all seen it come short of his glory. And I'm glad today that God didn't make my relationship with him conditional. Uh, he, 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 he didn't do that. But now, walking with him, walking in his love is conditional. Yeah, yeah. And the condition is this, that you love Without law. What? That you love. Without giving regards to anything other than this. I love you because you are a child of God. That's saying a lot. That means that you stop moving over. When that fellow that smells like a steel want to come sit next to you. Uh, are you praying with me? Yes, it means you stop calling the deacon to let them know that that fellow that's sitting back there is about half drunk. And y'all ought to get him out of here. No, no, no. The love of God doesn't work like that. When we're going to walk with him, then we have to be like him. And in order to be like him, we've got to meet people at their level. How many of you remember that scripture where they brought to Jesus a woman caught in the act of adultery? Now, I know some folks say, well, they should have brought to me in too, but I, I don't care about that. What I'm saying is that they brought this lady. This is one of those misfits. This is one of those ill repeats. This is one of those that folk ought to start looking down on. Look what she just got caught doing. But I can hear Jesus saying, I don't accuse you or not that. Go on about your business and stop sin. Can you tell somebody that? Can you tell them I'm going to love you in spite of what you are? I'm going to love you in spite of what you've done. I'm going to love you no matter what nobody else thinks about you. When we walk in the love of God, we don't walk judging folk. We walk like Jesus walked. And I can tell you story after story after story to where Christ could have said, get away from me. You ain't even in my level. You remember the man that slept in the graveyard? Red out biting folk? That when Jesus said, who are you? He said, I'm legion and there are many of us. Remember how Jesus said, y'all come out of him. Somebody said to Jesus, you need to be careful with that fellow. That fellow ain't no good. We keep him in chains. We keep him bound. He breaks the chain. He's a nut. When we walk with Jesus, there's that, so many times. Yeah. Misfits. Yeah. Misfits. Mm-hmm. Have been examples of how Jesus wants us to walk. Yeah. You remember the lady that we preach about so much? That had so much faith 
that she crawled through the crowd, touched the hem of his throat. Oh, that is so beautiful. But I stopped by today to tell you that I got some news for you. That woman was no good. What are you saying, Reverend? That lady had faith that we all ought to have. That lady was no good. And I didn't say she was no good. The Bible said she was no good. She had an issue of blood. And when you got an issue of blood, you don't go out in the public. When you got an issue of blood, you don't bother nobody. And don't nobody bother you. What right does this ill repute have coming into a crowd? She ain't got no business there. Touching a holy man. She's unclean. But I can see Jesus as he said, don't, don't, don't trouble me with that kind of mess. Somebody touch me. Well, Master Chief, you know, even when she looked at him and said, I, I, I got an issue of blood. It, it took a whole lot of courage for her to stand up in that crowd of folk and say that. Because if you go back into the book of Leviticus, she had no right to be in that crowd. She had no right to be out there, period. And then to crawl through the crowd and touch a holy man, that was worthy of stoning to death. Jesus is saying, I don't want to hear about that. I just want you to know that some virtue has gone out of here. And so when we walk with him in his love, then we got the same kind of love. Because the scriptures say, how can two walk together? Except they agree. You see, we need to agree with Jesus. That when we walk together with him, we don't start taking his children. And we don't start looking at them as good folk and bad folk. Rich folk and poor folk. Educated folk and ignorant folk. Good singers and bad singers. Good worshipers and bad worshipers. Church goers and non-church goers. But we look at them as these are God's children. And God has said that no man can be a better friend than somebody who's willing to lay down his life. This, this don't mean going to the cross. This don't mean going to jail. This don't mean getting killed. Sometimes we lay down our lives when we lay down what we think we have for what we can do for somebody else. Laying down our lives can sometimes be that I go out of my way in order to come your way, in order to help you do what you trying to do. Laying down our lives can sometimes mean taking what I have. It ain't but a little, and it ain't going far, but I'm willing to share it with you. Laying down my life can sometimes mean that I pray for you and you pray for me. I don't talk to God about your shortcomings and you don't talk to him about mine. Just ask God to bless me and no matter what shape I am, ask God to hold me and ask him to go with me because I know that when Jesus died, he didn't die for certain folk. He didn't die for a few of us. He died for all of us. I know if it had been me when I got up and said, I would have said to that man with the hammer that nailed those nails in my hand, me and you need to talk. Yeah, I got to get even. You know what you did to me. I believe I'd have to tell the man uh, with the sword uh, uh, that stuck me in my side. You know what you did. Now, I may not want to make a puppy thing out of it, but I got to talk to you. I ain't going to let you get by. There's nothing like that. But I can hear John as he come to Christ after he has risen and said, Lord, what's going to happen to that one that betrayed you? And I can hear Jesus saying, that ain't none of your business. What is that to you? If I say he stay here until I come again, you follow me and mind your own business. I know what God is like when he says that I want you to walk in my love. My love is unconditional. My love goes all the way from the cradle to the grave. My love reaches all the way from earth to glory. I don't judge nobody. I just want 
you to know that there is a God that died for you. He hung and bled on the cross for you. He even on that cross, looking down on folk who gambled it for his clothes, even before he's dead. They, he looked down on them and then looks up and say, Father, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Christ prayed for me when I wasn't a nobody, when I was lost and seeking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stayed within. I was seeking to rise no more, but the master of the seas heard my disturbing cry. From the waters he lifted me, now save am I. And I can hear him saying, abide in me by keeping my commandments. Walk with me by keeping my love. commandments contradict what you think are laws of survival. Yeah. yeah. So, so sometimes you think that there are laws of survival. But understand this. If Christ said do it. Every now and then and I'm through but every now and then we try, as the Pharisees and the Pharisees did, they try to make God look stupid. Yeah, yeah. In the fifth chapter of the same book, I happened to read that before I got here. Because it talks about a man, it talks about a man that. They lay by the gate <coughs> every day. Yeah. And you remember Jesus went by and told him, now, fella, I want you to pick up your baby and walk. Pick it up. Get up now. Not, not tomorrow, not last week. Get up right now. Pick up your baby. And go home. He got up following the commands of Jesus. Picked up his faith. And somebody came up and said to him, What are you doing? He said, I'm, I'm picking up my faith and I'm walking. Well, they said, You can't do that. You can't do that. Because today is the Sabbath. And you ain't, you can't pick up your, did you think that God didn't know what they want? When he healed the man? But the law say, but there are some things that cannot be controlled by the law. I don't care what the law says. When Jesus said to him, pick up your faith. He didn't ask him what day it was. He didn't care what day it was. So I want to say to you as I go to my seat, listen to the Holy Spirit. Don't try to figure it out. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard it. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has in store for those that love Him and is called according to His purpose. 
but have enough sense to know that if you know it, God knows it. Amen. And say it to them, I, I don't know. The only thing I know is that he told me to pick up my bed and walk. And that's what I did. And it didn't seem to make any difference when I got my bed and I put it on my shoulder and I started walking for the first time in my life. It, it didn't seem to make any difference that the day is the same. You would think if the day was a Sabbath, I would have stumbled and failed. But we have the Lord of the Sabbath. Are you with me? And the Lord of the Sabbath puts it like this. Listen. Listen. Man was not created. He was not created for the Sabbath. That's scripture. I'm not wise enough to say that. He said, but the Sabbath was made for me. So how do you make the law greater than those who have to serve under the law? Nothing is greater than God's children. Nothing. No, no, wait a minute. There's some angels in heaven. The angels in heaven ain't greater than I don't know of a single angel that Jesus ever died for. Not a single one. I don't know nothing else in the universe where God said, I love you so much that I sent my only son to die for you. He only said that to folk like me and you. Evil folk. Amen. I know what you're saying, Reverend. You ain't talking about me because they ain't evil. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Reverend, I wouldn't hurt a fly. Yeah. What day is it? You catch me on one of those days and I won't hurt a fly either. <laughs> I believe I can make this confession that I don't think that's Vincent would mind because when I make it, I'm going to quit it. <laughs> I can make the statement that this is a loving, kind, Amen. gentle person. Amen. Depending <laughs> upon what day it is. <laughs> now, there are days when he is a God fearing man of God. But don't push. <laughs> don't, 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 don't do that. I, I told a couple of fellas once, I said, now y'all listen to me. This is real close. I honestly believe deep down inside of me that I have too much spirituality. Yes, sir. To fight you. Right on the foot. Right on the foot. Now I know that Vince. I just feel it inside of me. I got too much spirituality to fight you. But y'all need to understand something. I've been wrong about my spirituality. <laughs> same today, yesterday, and forever. You can't make it mad. I, I know you think God made Jesus now. You can't make it mad. No. You can disappoint him. There even may come a time when you can cause him grief by the way we live, but you can't make him mad. If you could make him mad, he slap you plumb in the existence. Yeah, yeah, he can do that. Remember how, how what he said to Peter? He said, now listen to me, Peter. Son, put your sword up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put your sword up. Yeah. For two reasons. The first reason you ought to put it up is that he that live by the sword will die by the sword. 
He said, the second reason you ought to put it up is because I don't need you to fight for me. If I wanted somebody to fight for me, I prayed to the Father and he would send down 12 legions of angels and they would fight for me. I don't need one man with a sword to fight for me. That's church, I don't know what 12 legions of angels I don't have the slightest idea what 12 legions can do. It must be devastating. Yes, Lord. And ain't to make me think that it must be devastating because one day Satan came in unannounced outside of protocol, walks up to God and say, we taken over heaven. I got a third of your folk on my side and we taking it over today. And God didn't seem to get intimidated or upset or that time. Looked over at Michael. See, Michael, how that? <laughs> and the Bible says that Michael fought the draft. Michael. Not 12 legions. Michael. And that one angel would say, and a third of heaven and threw them all out. Now, if one man can do that, God tell me, what can a prayer of legions do? You got a God you can depend on. You got a God that can do whatever He wants. You got a God that can help you when can't nobody else help you. You got a God that can pick you up when everybody else is trying to pull you down and He's picking you and them up. I'm going to think we should take up the election send up Forte to Washington so they can open up the government. Good preaching makes good sense. And it always will make good sense. God worked this message out in his heart of just an instantaneous message, which means you got to really walk with God when an audible is called and you're able to respond like that. There is more to this, and we are bringing up the singer now, and I won't do this because Holy Spirit said do it. But there are those who have heard the message and the power, the pathos of that message. God wants to work in you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to love you beyond your faults. Let me come out here like a Baptist preacher. And somebody is stuck on neutral. You heard the word and the power of that word. And what's going to change you is the hearing of the word. Is that right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God from the man of God. Now, the setting and predicate is there for the change you need right now. If it's healing, get, get, get my all, get ready. Get, get my all and, and get ready. Amen? Yes, sir. If, if there's anointing, if there's a change you need to make in your life right now. Yes. Be foolish to sit up here and clap and, and laugh and not get changed. Do you go to the emergency room just to see who's there? And look around and then go along. No, you go to get help. And help us come here today with the word. Do you hear me? Don't you dare go home hurting. Don't you dare go home unfinished business that you haven't given to God. You have wasted your time. And those even from Nineveh will rise up and say, We didn't waste our time when Jonah preached to us. We got this in repentance. They'll rise up and talk about it. That's what Jesus said. Then of them will, will talk about the whole generation. And you've been heard. You've heard. You've been subjected to it. 
Now you need to be helped. Amen. You go in the ER, they, they treat our children. You know? Take your temperature, take your blood pressure. Amen. But now enough, you know what they're going to do before you get there. Just hold on now. Uh, put the finger up there. Open the mouth, huh? You've been there enough time to know. And then they may give you a bed if you're sick enough. Amen. This is the ER for heaven. You need to be triaged. Come on. And somebody, somebody, somebody. I, I'm convinced while, while, while our, our great singer, Sister Roll, sings, I want you to come up and get help. What a, what a, what a messy, Amen. messy service we have. If everybody heard it, went home. So what you going for? Well, I just wanted to hear. Now, 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 I got sorry to have the first one who's going to be brave. Who needs help? Who needs healing? Who needs the anointing of God afresh on you? Come on now! Don't you know this is shut? The lying church. The lying church. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. You're here under the sound of my voice. You're here under the conviction of the word. You're here when the wheels are turning in your heart 